It was a strong end to the first quarter of 2023 with equity markets seeing recent highs. And to some degree, this has uh, gone against some of the uh, uh, prevailing expectations that we had been looking at earlier on uh, in the month of March, at least. So ending very strongly. And uh, we started pretty much that way as well on the second quarter. But one of the big news headlines, of course, has been this uh, move on oil after the weekend's news. Fundamentally, that we saw uh, OPEC decide to take uh, more supply off the table. Let's get a technical view of what's happening in the markets as we look out uh, to Q2 uh, with Serge Berger from the SteadyTrader.com. Off now to Zurich. Serge, welcome. It's good to catch up with you. Uh, one of the things we were talking about at the back end of last, uh, uh, at the beginning of last month when we last spoke, uh, was this idea that the equity market's looking as though they might run out of steam. But one of the big things, as I say, going into Q2, has it been this move on the oil markets? How do we trade this? And where do you think the, the, uh, the, the, the trend is going to take us for oil? Hey, Jeremy, it's been an interesting move, and it was a, kind of a surprise move for, with OPEC. Usually the journalists are pretty good at sniffing out when OPEC makes a move. They didn't this time. Um, interesting dynamic. So I've been quite bearish on oil just from an, a global uh, or, yeah, I guess it's a global economic slowdown perspective, maybe ex-China. Um, and what I think this has done now, it has kind of put in, um, remember the Greenspan put? Uh, on equities, this is kind of like a put that I think it's been put in, been put in um, by OPEC, kind of like downside protection, if you will. Um, so I think the downside is quite limited. I brought along just a simple chart of the crude oil chart. We could look at Brent; it's more or less the same, you know, directionality. I actually do think the downside now is quite limited. So I think the path of least resistance is probably higher, um, somewhere into the mid 90s to 100 on WTI crude. Um, so that's kind of my thinking here and, you know, the, that's the supply side of it. The demand side of it, I do think is going to continue to be somewhat iffy. You have, again, slowing economies, uh, here in the West, in the United States and Europe, uh, but China, of course, coming back online. So that one's more challenge for me to get a header, uh, my, my head around. But I think right now that was a pretty powerful statement by OPEC to kind of put in some sort of a bottom for now. Mm, it's interesting, isn't it, because this rise in the price of oil is stoking fears about inflation. Uh, we saw the Reserve Bank of Australia today come through with no change on interest rates, which was a, an outlier in terms of market expectation. But it certainly seems like the RBA wants to wait to see what sort of effect its monetary um, uh, uh, tightening has had over the last 10 uh, meetings. And it'd be interesting to see what happens to the Fed, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank, as to whether or not they want to start taking the foot off the pedal. But if you add in this rise in the price of oil, if you see oil go higher, that just adds to the inflation worry, uh, which has all sorts of uh, knock-on effects. Uh, but in the back, uh, background of all this, we, we still have money going into equity. So risk assets are still appealing, apparently. And as I say, going back to our last discussion four weeks ago, we were looking at a market where we could well possibly see a turnaround any moment that, at that point. But since then, there has been this rally going into the back end of the, of the first quarter. Um, how do you measure what's going on uh, in the equity markets and indices at the moment? Sure. Well, so the equ uh, in terms of the equity market, this is... Um this is classic sort of what I call, I call it the, the bear market playbook. So before we even, I even go into this chart and go through a couple things, I think what's, what's really more important here is, is, and I always say this, more important than anything is always to understand the macro picture. So where are we? We're, we're in an economic, economic growth slowdown and the rates having gone in the United States from zero to essentially five in the course of 14, 15 months. Um, that's now slowly coming home to roost, and you can see the issues. We first they first started in the UK last autumn with the pension thing. Then we have uh, commercial Mac, more bank securities, um, and now of course we've had the thing with the with the banks on both sides of the pond. So this is essentially a grow a, a rolling credit problem crisis, and I think it's really just beginning. So in terms of equities, why have they rallied? Well, first of all, let's understand that in terms of equities, the equal weighted S and P 500, for example, has barely lifted. Um, relatively speaking, it's the absolute, the regular S&P, which is basically made up of a few stocks, as you know, in terms of the majority, Apples, you know, the Amazons, the Microsofts of the world, they've done well because rates have come lower. So the, nat the, first, the first reaction function when rates come down a little bit uh, in bear market rallies and latter part of the bear market is that people start buying longer duration assets. So particularly longer duration being in this case tech, right, with somewhat more predictable cash flow. So then it's buy, it's being 
It's buying Apple and Microsoft, basically, is what it comes down to, which is scary in and of itself because things are getting worse underneath the surface. So I think that's it's nothing more than that. And when, when I talk to people, and we have a very large retail um, a client base on the subscription side, um, and when I read the kind of get the sentiment reading, it's very scary to think that people have very have essentially learned almost nothing from the past uh, year and a half of, of equity equity weakness and are still way too happy to take on risk. So one way one day we're just going to wake up, equity is going to be down three four percent, and it'll be you know a one way street lower again. Um, but I don't know what day that is, right? If I knew, uh, that would be that would be fun. But um, but I don't. So I think it's just playing. Per, it, the upside is very limited from here. Maybe it's four thousand two hundred on the on the S and P. But but I think the you know the um, the exuberance feelings that a lot of people are having are probably overdone. So so what what point would would you be happy taking a short position on this market? What do you want to see broken on the downside? Uh, to give you that confidence that the short trade is going to win you money. Yeah. So, and in full disclosure, I started yesterday. I, I, we, we covered our longs, or, and this is personally in my own trading book. I, we didn't do this for clients because it's a bit too quick. But I covered my longs uh, in the equity futures market on Friday. So a couple of days ago, I re-entered them both on the Nasdaq and the S and P in very small size to kind of step in again yesterday. So just just for you, from a you know talking my own book perspective, so you know where I stand. However, I have a lot of room to add, right? So I would exactly as you say, I would start to add more once we see some sort of price confirmation. Um, you know, it's difficult to give you a level because I think what's going to happen, it's going to come pretty quickly. It's probably going to be related to earnings at this point, unless we get an extra, you know. A shock outside of that from geopolitical perspective, God forbid, or something else. But I think it's probably going to be earnings. And I, and I think we would need to see some meaningful down day or down week where it's very clear that we've once again found a ceiling. Um, maybe it's 4,200, maybe it's in an extreme case, 4,300 in the upside, where we then reverse from. Um, I can't give you a specific percentage drop because it really depends on, on many factors, but some particularly notably on a weekly closing basis, some some basically give up of the gains. Like we had, for example, um, in um, uh, in August of last year, uh, like we had, for example, in February of this year, where things started to get overbought again, and we, we had price confirmation on a weekly basis back to the downside. Okay, so that's the equity markets. How do you feel about gold? I mean, we always talk about gold. Gold is one of the most, uh, it's one of the most regularly asked questions about the direction of gold. I was talking to clients the other day, uh, and they were saying, "Why is it not broken two thousand? Uh, how long is it going to take to get there? And psychologically, how difficult is that two thousand level now? Uh, because it's tried so many times to get beyond it." Great questions. Um, I'd like to start just quickly with 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 what drives gold. Um, what I brought along here is is I brought along a, a gold proxy. It's an ETF at the bottom of the screen in in uh, appropriately in yellow, and at the top you have something called uh, real interest rates. So that's essentially nominal interest rates subtracting inflation expectations. And you can see that there's an inverse correlation. So for example, back in 2019 when real interest rates went down, gold rallied, um, and I think something similar is happening right now. So what's going to get that? 2000 mark to to crack, um, it's probably going to be in real interest rates coming down. So it could either be, you know, the economy slowing, things getting worse, and the Fed finally saying, you know what, we need to either cut rates or at least becoming more vocal around that idea. Um, it could be inflation uh, just coming down quicker than people thought, or just coming, which is actually from a year over year look back, it's likely going to start happening around May or June. And inflation really starts to crater towards maybe four, three and a half percent, something like that quite quickly. So any of that could probably get the gold above 2000. And then, of course, the question is, you know, if you look at the, a lot of people talk about positioning in gold and how people are basically under allocated or um, I don't want to say misallocated because that would be a judgment of how people should be uh, uh, positioned. But, you know, even just taking gold up uh, at one or two or one percent in someone's in a pension fund, you know, and if that's being done broad scale, that would probably get gold to 2,500 rather quickly. So I think, you know, to your question, we're kind of coiling here, and we could see a quick spike towards 2,500 once some of these things come to fruition. However, and this is important about gold, it's important to understand that gold becomes a source of funds for portfolio managers 
if they have to sell. So if the equity market were to sell off again, the first reaction to that would probably be gold coming down a little bit because it can be used as a source of funds, right? If you have not, if you have to get a margin call or something, you have to sell some gold where you can to raise some funds to cover those calls. So just be mindful of that. It's 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 not a linear move, but it it could come pretty quickly. So my thing is just being positioned. I own a bunch of different ETFs around this. Some of the some ones are physical backed, some less so. Um, I'm even thinking of adding some gold miners here. I have meant to do it a couple of days ago. I haven't done it yet. But I think it's one of patience because gold is notoriously difficult to time for me personally. Um, so I just rather be positioned and have sort of a, a multi-month, multi-quarter view at least um, on this move happening towards 2,500. And then we'll see if it goes to 3,000 over the course of a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Serge, thanks so much indeed. Update there from Serge Berger from studytrader.com uh, looking at uh, some of the markets on the move as we set out on this second quarter of 2023.